What's going on everyone? My name's Amanda Lawrence. Some of you may know me as Miss Amanda Ann on Instagram for all my powerlifting posts and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I'm starting to look to do this whole YouTuber thing. Uh, you only see a small glimpse of my life there on Instagram and so I'm just looking to kind of expand that so you can see you know, a little bit more about me. I'm looking to try to make these videos topic based. If you have any suggestions of what, you know, what content you'd like to see, definitely leave a suggestion down below. Today, just gonna go get a scoop of pre-workout in my system, kind of get that, that boost of energy in, then we're gonna get after it. This is my pre-workout stack of choice. It is VPN subs, both Flight and Endopump. If you're looking to check them out, you can use my code MAN10 at checkout, but I mean, you get roughly 300 milligrams of caffeine in a scoop, and pump is a non-stimulant, but it mixes well. So we'll get that going. Takes, what, 15 minutes to get in your system, and we'll be ready to smash workout. <laughs> so I'm on a, uh, like an athlete locator form, so like they, they, USA Powerlifting can literally come at any time to drug test me. So it's called like an out-of-meat test. Um, so I'm on that list. But now there's also a separate list for WADA, World Anti-Doping Agency, um, for like the IPF, so for international, like, uh, I guess, sake. So I just got an email for that, so it's fine. <laughs> Everyone knows where I am at all times. <laughs> no, but yeah, I think in the past, gosh, because I've been pausing for what, like almost four years, not quite. Um, I've had like roughly at least 10 drug tests. So like I've had like two or three out of meat and then almost every meat I've had a drug test. Because if you're breaking, if you're breaking records, then you for sure get one. So, and that's what we do, we break records. Because, uh, you know, we're trying, we're trying to push limits and stuff. about what headphones I use. And I use the, there's Sony WH-1000XM3. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. And Hannah Montana's totally playing on my <laughs> headphones right now. <laughs> yeah, I don't really have like any specific music I listen to, I just pull up Spotify. I should really create a playlist. Um, just anything sort of like with a good beat, bass, then, then you know, I, I vibe with that. So that, that's what I'm listening to, it changes. Um, I never was, able to record, obviously, while listening to music. So I went ahead and I bought the app called Midio. It's just like video, but with an M. And that, that was like three bucks. There's this new app called, um, called right here, PR Cam. And it's free, and you just click play, and you can listen to music, and it records. It's nice to, and I have all my clients, because I, I also do coaching, um, have them video their sets. Because sometimes things are gonna feel different than they actually look, right? So I like taking my last few warm-ups on video and, you know, kind of judging from there where to go. Obviously, you can kind of like feel it out too, but yeah. The equipment I use for squatting at least, SVD long flexible wraps are my favorite. Obviously, the SVD belt can't go wrong. And I use uh, Reebok Legacy Lifters. I'm really excited for Nike to come out with their new pair of squat shoes. Um, not sure, I've seen, pro like when they'll release, I've seen prototypes. So that's what I'll be getting next, because I haven't found a better shoe than that yet. And then I just use the SBD knee sleeves. I, try, I, I wear a size medium for reference. A lot of people ask me, I guess, which size I get on. Um, preferably the smallest size that <laughs> like your calves will allow, um, like obviously to get up. So I mean, that's pretty much the equipment I use for squats. I compete. I mean, for people who don't really like, like know me, I compete in in the raw division. So it's just sleeves. There's no wraps or like suits or anything like that. 
So the raw power lifting division, and I am the 84 kilo weight class, so I compete in the one, so that converts to 185 pounds and under. Um, so that's my weight class, that's I guess my, my division I compete in. I am 22 years old, so I qualify for both the junior division up until next year when I'm, or this year when I'm 23, um, and then pretty much the open division but where I'm basically more competitive in just because it's all ages and not even, not even just that, just my numbers are more competitive for that division. So, um, 84 kilo open and yeah. I like wearing leggings in training because it helps get the knee sleeves up easier. Don't get me wrong, I still struggle. Actually, these are working pretty good. so I can work out here just in case if I don't want to drive to the gym or if there's bad roads or something like that. So I have the Rogue combo rack. I really like it. A lot of people think it's overbuilt. This combo rack's like 500 something pounds. The normal one's like maybe like 250 to 350 pounds. So it's pretty heavy duty. I like it just because it feels like super sturdy. Um, almost like a full cage, if that makes sense. But yeah, I mean, otherwise I pretty much, I have another freestanding bench here. If I wanna train on like a non-fat pad, depending on the meat that you're, I, I guess, training for. I got a full set of uh, row calibrated kilo plates. Um, I solely train on those now just because it's what I'm gonna be using in, in a meet and I'm trying to mimic, you know, everything um, as much as possible, what I'm going to be seeing in meets. Also have this delt platform that I built could go over it in more detail in a later video how I built it and whatnot. Not really like anything special. It's plywood and pretty much horse, horse mat. So I'm looking to get some like dumbbells, maybe like a cable from here over here. I have a little more space, just like a one garage shelf kind of thing. So I don't have like a ton of space, but yeah, I mean, I pretty much mostly just bench at home um, on the occasional spotter delf, but it's just sometimes it's hard to get in like, I guess the vibe to lift heavy here, just because, I don't know, it's like a home setting. And it's also nice lifting with friends too, so that's why a lot of the times I'll go to Lions and I'll squat or deadlift and then I'll come home and bench. It's also nice too, because since, like I was saying before, I bench so frequently five days a week, you know, it's, it's nice not having to be at the gym all the time. I can just come home and bench. So that's mostly the reasoning behind that and just like, just having the bench I want to, I guess, have too. Um, at my gym, at Mines, there's like Texas Strength System racks, so those aren't like necessarily my favorite to bench on. I really prefer like the Rogue, the Alico, and Ghost Strong's um, combo rack. Looks pretty good. I haven't used it, but it looks it looks solid. So, like in the market for a rack, I would recommend those ones. been a game changer for I guess mocking what is going to show up in a meet right because the platforms are carpeted um, but I found that these rogue platforms in specific they're super bouncy so and slippery as well so this carpet kind of allows you know a bit more grip as well as it kind of I guess absorbs the impact a bit better and really keeps the bar in place and prevents it from rolling so I don't know, they're on sale right now, like 20% off. I would recommend getting one of these. It's like a two by seven foot footer, and then there's like strip from the bottom. Really anything works. You can probably just go to Menards and ask for like uh, leftover carpet strips for free or something. But yeah, that's, 
That's been a game changer, 100%. So when I'm deadlifting, just kind of walking you through my setup, I, I guess I set up my feet. I, can, I, go, I go max stance sumo. Um, that's just what I feel strongest with. When you're, I guess, standing in a position like this, you have to make sure you're bringing your toes in as you're dropping the weight. So um, obviously you're not smashing your feet. When I guess setting up for the lift, I get in my stance, I grab the bar. You can pull either hook grip or over under grip. I have done both, but I found better success with over under. You just really have to make sure that you're pulling the bar in on your underside so it's not like helicoptering out away from you. Um, but really, the focus is making sure I'm starting to pull midfoot and getting my body weight behind the bar, my shoulders in line with the bar, and as upright as possible. So, a couple quick cues that I'm thinking of, just because I know like if if you throw too many cues at somebody, it's going to be hard to like execute. So a few that I think of, when I'm sitting my hips back, I think to almost like twist my elbows back to really tighten, tighten my lats. So you want to like think, twist your elbows back so you're both pinching your scapula as well as depressing your scapula so you're getting that back tight. And that will in turn, when you're tightening your upper back, help you push your chest out. Um, because if you're not pushing your chest out, your shoulders are going to be in front of the bar. You want them to be in line with the bar. So I take in my air when my hips, when my hips are up, set them down, tighten my lats, push my chest out, then pull up. Again, really making sure that as soon as I tighten my lats, push my chest out, sit my, sit my hips back, that the bar is starting over my midfoot. And when I'm doing this, the slack is being pulled out. And I'm really trying to pull the bar in so it's not getting away from me, which is, I mean, gonna be inefficient and sumo is a super technical lift. There's basically no room for error. If the bar kicks away, too far away from your shins, you're not gonna be able to get the weight up. It's not, it's not the same as conventional, so. Um, it's just like perfecting the lift over time. I, like, didn't start out max stance sumo. There's, there's just no way you could do that. You have, to, you have to build up your inner leg muscles and whatnot, get your hips used to it. I actually started out more like a squat stance, and this is actually what I do with my clients until they're able to really build up, you know, your inner leg muscles until they're able to get used to it. Um, and then eventually, you can keep moving out. The wider you go, the more pointed out your toes are gonna have to be. The narrower, the more forward. So, I just found more success with sumo for myself. Just like kind of due to my leverages, I have a hard time um, getting as much leg drive with it, with, with conventional compared to sumo. Um, so that's the reason why I do sumo, just because I'm very leg dominant. Um, and I also have an easier time like getting more upright, just because it's all, it's all about ratios, right, of your body. So I have longer legs, a little bit shorter arms. And so it, it only makes sense to pull sumo. If, you, if I had a bit longer of arms, maybe shorter legs, conventional would make more sense. Um, so, I mean, it's just, it's just all about your leverages and, you know, what works for you. cold Minnesota just finished up a workout but I wanted to go ahead and close out this video for you guys I wanted to thank y'all for watching be sure and subscribe if you like the content and excited for what's coming like the video and like I said leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions for topics that you'd like to see in future videos um, so th thanks for stopping by I'll see you in the next one <laughs> Yeah!